Hello and welcome back to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm going to be sharing this video that I painted last year for Halloween. So in the spirit of creating some nice sort of spooky paintings then why not give this a go? It may take a couple of goes to sort of um, to nail it, but it's certainly worth practicing the techniques that are here that give these lovely misty mountains. And of course, it's really important to say, especially for beginners, that the techniques that you learn here when you do demos or tutorials like this are not just for this demo. I'd love you to see them as transferable skills that you can take forward into many of your upcoming future paintings. This is the photograph that's inspired the painting and I hope it inspires you as just as much. I'm going to be using just two colours, um, Cotman Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna and using various wash brushes, um, a detail brush, that's a small calligraphy brush and a flat brush I think to um, paint this scene to start with wet in wet and as I say just two colours, Burnt Sienna Payne's Grey, they should marry and mingle on the page. They give me a great range of tonal values. They are typical spooky um, Halloween colours, orange and black. So I'm hoping this castle a sort of a bit of a sort of a Count Dracula vibe.
So I started off using very light values, painting onto the wet page with my two colours, Burnt Sienna and Payne's Grey. And as I painted, I gradually increased the intensity or value of each of the mixes, building up this very misty, softly diffused scene, which hopefully should have a sort of sense of mystery. I've got some nice darks in. I'll need to darken it up once it dries. But for now, I'm going to just scrape a bit of texture for the rocks and the mountain sides into my wet paint or damp paint using the side of a palette knife. And I hope you can see that by negatively painting around my castle buildings, um, it's standing out beautifully, even against such a strong, dark background. I'm going to let it dry now and as soon as it's dry I'll come in and put a bit more of the same colours using horizontal brush strokes just to give the impression of a soft sunset. So now that sunset is in place, I'm going to use my small calligraphy brush, but any small brush with a good point will do. And with a medium value to dark value uh, mix of both of my paints, my Payne's Grey and my Burnt Sienna, I'm going to start um, creating the impression of lots of little trees around the castle growing out from the mountainside and around the castle. Because I'm painting these wet on dry, I'll have harder edges, although I will soften some of the edges of these trees into the misty walls of the castle and the mountain. So we'll have hard edges for the canopies of the trees and darker tones negatively painted around the castle which will help the castle to stand out even more. So this detail that we're painting using the wet on dry technique is what will help to bring the scene together and help the castle to stand out as the focal point.
Now I'm really darkening up some of the rocks on the mountain side, especially down in this lower left corner, working around the marks that I scraped in earlier with the palette knife. And I'm going to add a bit more texture with the burnt sienna. I'm covering over my sky and my castle to protect it with a piece of, of paper and then using a fan brush to just spatter into the wet paint there. I can just finish this off now by scraping a few tree trunks and branches into the trees around the castle just for the impression of trunks and branches and I can scrape a little bit more detail into the damp paint around the castle into the rocks and the mountain. This just adds a little bit more variety and texture and a little bit of shape and form to the rocks. And now it's time to leave this layer to dry completely and I'll come back and work on the castle. So here it is, it's nice and dry and these colours are a bit closer to how it looks um, because the lighting is better in my studio at the moment. I've decided to treat the castle as a line and wash. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do that, which is why I didn't put line work in at the beginning. I thought it might be nice painted, but I like how stark it looks against this spooky background. So I'm just going to enhance that starkness using a waterproof fine liner. It's a Faber Castell artist pit pen, and I'll simply draw over my pencil drawing, my pencil sketch, um, adding a little bit of shadow and shade here and there and work across the whole castle until it stands out really nicely. And then I'll add a few just small washes into the roofs and into the buildings here and there just to um, blend them into the rest of the scene. So just a bit of burnt sienna, nice rich value on the turret roof. And I think that's just about it for the castle. 
few more finishing touches, just a few extra darks where the paint grey has dried back a little bit lighter. So by layering up the full value or the darkest values of Payne's Grey, I can get it as dark almost as a black. And you can see how much that's really making everything stand out. All those lighter areas uh, just below and around the castle will really stand out because of the contrast between that lovely dark value and the lighter value where I've scraped through the paint earlier and also the lighter value washy washes from the first layers of wash that I first applied. So I'm happy with this at the moment. I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. So removing the tape, we can take a look at the painting. Removing the tape takes off all those sort of scruffy brush strokes that have gone onto the tape in order to keep the brushwork flowing and it allows us to see it almost as if it was um, in a mount or a mat or a frame. Um, and we can see whether or not we think it's finished. And I'm happy with this. I could work a lot more into this. I could turn this into a really detailed painting. But for now, I think that's fine. I like the looseness of the misty mountain compared to the comparatively more detailed and slightly tighter work on the trees around the castle and the castle itself. And while it's not strictly Halloween themed, I hope that the sort of spooky, mysterious feel of all the mist wreathing the mountain and the castle and the colours that I've used gives it a sufficiently spooky Halloween-y vibe. Well, let me know what you think in the comments. I always really enjoy reading your comments, even if I sometimes don't have time to reply to them all. And if you enjoyed this demo, then you might enjoy my book, Landscapes in Watercolour, Techniques and Tutorials for the Complete Beginner. Um, it's available to purchase from all good bookstores, and I'll leave a couple of links in the description below. So take a look if that interests you. I hope you enjoyed today's Halloween themed demo and that you'll give something like this a go. And thank you so much to everybody that supports this channel on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. And if you'd like to support the channel, then please follow the links below. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.